Welcome everyone to the Jenkins Infrastructure Team Meeting. Uh, today we are the 2nd of July 2024. Around the virtual table we have myself, Damien Duportal, so Hervé Le Maire is off, Mark Waite is off. We have Stéphane Merle, Bruno is not there today, Kevin is off, and Jerry with us. So the three of us. Uh, let's get started with the announcements. So as a reminder, we canceled last week meeting, so we have two weeklies on one this time. <laughs> last week, we successfully released a 2.464 weekly version of Jenkins. Uh, no problem on the release, on the packages. However, mirror sync uh, failed as usual. Of the package builds due to OSU OSL slowness. So we might need to think about taking action on that area. Uh, most probably stop putting OSU OSL as the first uh, as the first one, but we'll see. Uh, we should be able to ex to accept uh, that the package build is only copying to archive, then copying to OSUSL and then continue with the OSUSL ports being asynchronous, not blocking the end of the package build. Uh, we'll see later. This week, we have the weekly release 2.465. It started on time. Started on time. Let's watch it. Uh, please note that change log might be late due to both uh, Mark and Kevin off. So don't expect the change log until uh, end of week unless uh, Mark find the internet somewhere in the mountains. Yeah, and I, I shouldn't break release too. Thanks to remind me that. Yep. Do you have any question about the two weekly releases? Nope. Okay, let's continue on the announcement. Uh, last week, we had the Jenkins security advisory uh, that happened the 26th, so the Wednesday. Uh, these were only plugins, and everything was applied less than 48 hours uh, on the infrastructure. So CI Jenkins are your first, that's part of the security advisory process by the security team. And Stefan and I did deliver the last bits during the two following days. Uh, nothing else here to say. Any question? Uh, continuing on the security part, let me put that one first. Uh, yesterday was published a funny CV. Uh, name, uh, so the, that CV is an open SSH server. Uh, that is an RCE with full root access and unauthenticated. So that's scary, but it's not that much. It's hard to exploit only on MD64 and a few uh, Linux distribution. Uh, most of the Windows OpenSSH and Alpine OpenSSH are not affected because it's only due to glibc. Um, and older version of SSH 8.5 and lower are not affected. Uh, our platform was affected, even if the risk is not that high. So we have upgraded every affected pieces we could find yesterday. Most of our virtual machines, mainly. We also published a new Docker SSH uh, and Docker agent images, just to be sure. Uh, same for the same reason, risk is low. Exploiting it is really hard. However, better safe than sorry. Uh, I've put the link to the CVE on the notes and also a link to the Ubuntu description because that's a concern for the, the whole Jenkins infrastructure. Please note that only Ubuntu, Jemmy, Mantic, and Noble were affected. Looks like Upstream is as well. Uh, we had one virtual machine on Bionic. It's not vulnerable. And we have one machine on Focal, which is not very vulnerable either. Any question? Okay, so that has been fixed. Uh, that has raised the topic though with the internal discussion with the uh, Gen Sec security team. 
uh, I thought we had SSH restrictions on the some of our machines, but we have machines that do not have. So we are going soon to put in place some additional restriction on the allowed IP when it comes to going through SSH. That might require a few SSH configuration change for you folks, because we might need to require going through the VPN. However, uh, we could continue the pattern we have on other machines with administrator IPs and platform IPs allowed. It feels more secure for me because if we crash the VPN, we're dead. Oh, no, we still have the cloud access and we can share things. Yeah, by the UI, you're right. Or code. Uh, we have to check our SSH restrictions on VMs. Do you have any question on the CV? Nope. Uh, last announcement. So again, thanks Yandex and Ostico for hosting us. So now, um, after uh, a lot of back and forths, we now have a new mirror, uh, which used to be an unofficial one, but now it's official and synchronized and known by our system for the Russian users. If you are in Russia, if your connection is seen as Russia, your request to get Jenkins IO will be redirected to the Yandex mirror, which is hosted near the, uh, the area of Moscow. So all the traffic coming from Russia, instead of being blocked uh, on Germany or uh, overloading our uh, Ostico Romanian mirror, is going to Yandex. So thanks for them and thanks everyone involved. We also restricted uh, the Ostico mirror to only Romania for now, and they just confirmed they, are, they saw a huge decrease on the incoming traffic, which makes it sustainable for them. And they say they are okay if some time to time we need to divert traffic from one mirror to theirs. We just have to let them know. So let's keep things like this. Romania and Russia have country only mirrors. The rest of the traffic, East Europe, uh, East Europe, is now back, is the rub traffic on get.geo, is now back to Aachen or uh, Belnet, which are the two European mirrors we have today. We also have one in London, but it's, it's, a, bit, uh, uh, it's a bit slower. Any question on the mirrors? So I was wondering, wondering if we should create another blog post to thanks Yandex and eventually Ostico. I'm gonna ask the documentation team meeting. We might have news for next week. So I propose we raise that topic uh, uh, next week. Is that okay for everyone? Okay, let's have a look at the upcoming calendar. The next weekly release is planned next week. We will be the 9 July 2023, and the version number is expected to be 2.466. Next LTS is the 10th of July, so next week, Wednesday. So we will have not to break the infrastructure. Uh, as a note and a reminder, that release will keep using, as expected, the whole Maven 3.8. Eight and the whole GDK 11 we were using. It's that uh, LTS line still uses the 4.x version of the Docker image, which is expected again. Just dropping that note so everyone if, feels safe about that. And also another note, Hervé and I will watch carefully the Docker image generation during that release at the end. Uh, thanks to, to his work, we are able to have a smart system that detects and doesn't build GDK 11 on the weekly line, but we need to keep GDK 11 on the LTS lines until October. So we'll see how that script perform for the LTS because it will be the first time we we'll run it for an LTS line. Worst case, the Docker image build breaks and we update it. Uh, we don't have security release announced. 
And uh, I've prepared in order not to waste too much time, the upcoming credential expiration that we haven't done yet. So we have in the upcoming three weeks, 16 and 17 July, we have a set of Terraform Azure Service Principal credentials used for the Terraform states on the Azure backends and a few other technical users, they will expire. So that's all on the Terraform state repository. And uh, thanks to the work of Stefan, Hervé, and now mine, uh, we should have soon in the upcoming days an automated system with pull requests. We still have to plan the changes because that involves uh, breaking the Terraform jobs and when we rotate credential, but that's okay. We will also have Let's Encrypt Azure Service Principle. We already have an issue. It's an current milestone and we will work on it on the upcoming milestone. Uh, we have a few credential expiration in four weeks. So we will mention them next week. Anything else on the upcoming calendar, folks? Okay. So let's have a quick look at the budget. So on Azure, uh, we were under the 4.3K. So congratulations, everyone. We consume exactly 4,187 and we have $100 of support as monthly. So we are way under our threshold. So good job. Let's continue like this. I will pass on the current consumption because uh, it's only two days. We haven't even the aggregated result for today. So let's see next week. A word about the Azure sponsorship. So the credit we use, uh, uh, we have consumed 7.3K. So as you can see the increase <laughs> since the past months, which means we are using these credits, which is good. We want it. We want this credit to be consumed before they expire. Same, I won't uh, spend too much time on the consumption. Let's see next week how we fare. Digital Ocean, we now see the full effect of not having uh, CI Jenkins IU workload running on it. Uh, same, just a few dollars consumed. Digital Ocean right now is, let's say, on a break uh, in terms of consumption. We will focus our effort on Digital Ocean later uh, this year. And finally, on AWS, uh, also good news, we consume 5.8K. So our goal would have been to have 5K per month. Uh, that was the goal until end of July. We are close, but since it depends a lot on the outbound bandwidth of the update center, there is a positive to it. It's because these eight additional 100 per month are due to more user and more requests to the update center. So there is something positive here. We see an increase in normal usage on Jenkins. Is it because more user? Is it because more activity? I don't know, but I mean, we pay for something which is worth it. Uh, we haven't seen the July consumption that should be around 5.5K because usually July has a decreased, um, decreased consumption every year. Uh, because we have Independence Day in the US, then holidays in most of the northern countries, uh, Europe at least, and US. So we should consume a bit less, but yeah, uh, we are online and we will have to continue our work. Let's see the next planning around uh, stop using CloudBees before end of year. And the AWS credits is untouched. We have 60K credits left here. Any question about the budgets? Perfect, let's get to work. Um, first of all, let's cover quickly last milestone that has been closed virtually last Tuesday. Uh, so plugin manager inside Jenkins does not show latest platform label or release. So no infrastructure action expected here that has been fixed by the Jenkins CI admin that was GitHub configuration stuff. Get Jenkins IO, provide a mirror for Jenkins Russian users. Hey, we did it. <laughs> Yandex. Same additionally to Yandex and um, 
and as well uh, Ostico in Romania, we have an individual in India who is providing us now a new mirror. So we now have two mirrors in India and one in Taiwan for the Asian users. So many thanks for that person. Uh, they even open a new issue about other sponsor that could find a mirror. So clearly a good improvement. And we had to do some back and forth with that user because that's way more traffic than they expected. <laughs> but they fixed the issue on their own. And if we can find way more mirror that will spread the load for everyone. Again, thanks for making the Jenkins project sustainable, folks. Any questions? OK. So then contribution stats. Uh, there were issues related to the system that Jean-Marc Messen, now retired, congrats to him, uh, led to us, and it had to be migrated to the Jenkins Infra GitHub repository. So Hervé and Bruno worked on this topic, and they were able to migrate everything, which implied fixing a few elements, such as a token to allow distribution of the command line on our own channels instead of John Marks, fixing permissions, and creating a technical account on external system that are, that are doing code, uh, code analysis on the pull request for the Golang project. Everything has been fixed and confirmed by both John Mark and Bruno. Where the user had the configuration issue on their repository that was preventing them to publish their plugin, fixed by the help of many people, so thanks everyone, and the contributor confirmed it was okay. Any question? Okay, let's continue. Um, we started to improve our automation and reporting system. So we now have at least the one of our Terraform projects that is on every build publishing a report of, a f of the public information such as outbound IPs. That allowed us to create automation. We now also have in our public API, the outbound IP for the mirrors. So our end users can allow the IPs of these mirrors on the network so their user can reach these mirrors. And the mirrors maintainer sponsoring the project can restrict the incoming request from inf our infrastructure for scanning the mirror to avoid them being DDoSed by unusual or unexpected users. Please note, we can, that has laid the ground to more automation for us. Uh, Stefan, Jay, I see uh, we, you are with us. In the upcoming weeks, we might have to do some update CLI improvements so we can retrieve values from one repository and move them to the other. If we define something in Kubernetes and need to get it on Azure or the other way around, for instance. Next topic, streamline Maven version across the infrastructure. Now we are using, for the weekly releases, an up-to-date Maven version, and it has been tracked. Uh, so as a consequence of that task done two weeks ago, thanks again, Jay, for the help. Now we were able to clean up all the whole reference of old Maven version on the infrastructure. Another topic, the Jenkins stat repository has been moved. So in fact, oh, sorry, that was part of the uh, moving the tool, the tooling from Jean-Marc and Bruno confirmed everything is working. Finally, uh, thanks Stefan, you were able to help us on decreasing the Azure CDF bill by moving the workload of infra CI Jenkins IO to the sponsor account. So let's not lie too much. It's uh, just a few bucks per month. We thought it could, it was higher, but due to us using um, uh, spot instances, the cost was less than 10 bucks per month as per what our measures. However, there is still a good outcome of that issue outside the learning curve for everyone and the improvement on the infrastructure. We also improve the security. Infra CI agents are not running on the same cluster as the controller now. We have physical separation, which is way better for us for controlling accesses and protecting ourselves. They were already in another cluster. Nope. They agent. were in the same cluster. Agent, yes. Agents were on the same, uh, they were on private gates. 
and you move these uh, agents yeah, to the that new was the node pool the, the, that was the node pool which was exactly we provided some kind of isolation but yeah. the kubelet were still there and there were possibility it wasn't multi-tenant right now it is yes we had an unrelated issue that we close as not planned because not related to the infrastructure but uh, to user network issue any question on the previous milestone folks Okay, thanks again for your work on this one. Let's switch to the current milestone now. Um, the task we were able to close. First, CI Jenkins IO reported during the last weekend a bunch of HTTP 502 errors. So Mark, Mark opened an issue. Stefan and I were able to track this. So tracked to an issue with Docker 2702. Upgraded Docker, restart, and it is now fixed. We haven't seen the issue happen anymore um, uh, with network causing high CPU load. Is that correct, Stefan? So details have been reported on the issue, but we saw during three days high CPU load. We were uh, lucky it was still responsive. Yeah. Hey, the Java Virtual Machine is quite resilient system. Really good. Should have alerts when so much high CPU. For so long. For so long. True. Any question here? OK, just a minute. Okay, sorry, back. Uh, next issue. One of our contributors was seeing failures on his pro when building his project on CI Jenkins IO, the project being a Jenkins plugin, uh, related to an artifact not being there. So thanks, thanks to so Basil was a so we did we did a teamwork yesterday with Stefan to deep dive and we reach the, the the limits of our knowledge around Maven or and or Maven plugins. We tried a lot of things. We asked for help, and Basil was able to uh, update the plugin. So he did uh, modernize the plugin because it was a two or three years old system, and it updated not only dependencies but pom parent, pom configuration, and enabled incremental. That has the good consequence of fixing the build. Uh, many, many thanks for that help because I reached my knowledge limit here. Any question? That, nope. that wasn't yep. ACP related, so. Yep, that is true. So uh, at least our initial analysis was good. That was a good thing we started. We did the level one support basically here. Uh, thanks, Mark. He was able to remove uh, spammers and reported it on the issue. We did renew Cloudflare API token as uh, we had. So that part should be automated with the, I mentioned the Terraform states as your service principle. It has been done manually because it was today. So in order to not spend too much time on the automation uh, blocking the renewal, we were able to do it. Uh, same, last, we were able to update the credential last week That's, uh, that is used by Infra CI Jenkins IO to spin up Azure Virtual Machine Agent. So same, that one was automated, had a pull request. So thanks, Stefan, for initiating that automation through pull request because we had documentation that's quite easy to, to do. So good job. Any question? Nope. Next one, store Jenkins infra, infra statistic data in a public location. So as part of a GSOC project where uh, driven by Hervé Lemur, uh, at least, um, there is a project to write a nice front end website for stats Jenkins IO, because right now it's an HTML from 10 years ago or something like that. One of the main concern was uh, the, the student, the GSOC student working on it, 
started to raise the topic with Hervé that it's taking a lot of time because the front end is doing uh, 100 or eventually 1,000, I don't know the exact number, but too much request and it was slow to load. So the proposal was when building the static website or updating it uh, at least once a week, uh, the idea is to, uh, or monthly, I think it's monthly, let's generate a cached version of the information needed by the front end as part of the CI builds. So there is only one static file to serve, easier to treat, less downloads, way more performance. So a solution has been found uh, that did not involve any new service or any new resource in the end. Uh, it looks like the CI build is downloading the repository through a zip file. You can download GitHub repository as a zip file. No Git involved, no submodules, no subtree, just a zip file of 30 megabytes, and then it's treated as part of the build. So success and, and efficient. Thanks everyone involved in this. We were also able to provide Maven 3.9.8 to our developers. And last week, Jenkins uh, core release used it, and this week as well. Uh, I don't remember. Enter website, file share, credential using the client password. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah while rotating. Yes. Uh, while rotating uh, some credential. Uh, we cooked, Hervé uh, cooked that uh, the whole credential wasn't expired, which was weird. In fact, it's because at the moment on time, our Terraform as code switched to what we call a service principle password to an Azure application password. Both have the same role, but they are not the same object. And one has an expiration date and not the other. But we forgot to update our system to use the new one that has been fixed by that issue. And we have confirmed that now, when it reached the expiration day, it cannot reach the API anymore, which is what we expect. All the service principal client password has been removed. Any question? So duplicate of last week, because we had to reopen the issue and add it there. Uh, we had to fine tune the, gen the Russian mirror provided by Yandex, so it's only restricted to Russia. So thanks everyone involved on this one. Same for the new mirror in India. Same thing, we had to uh, change some settings and fine tune. Finally, Basil uh, closed the ACP timing out issue as we weren't able to reproduce it, most probably because we fixed the DNS in the clusters. Uh, maybe that issue will come, but most of the errors were either client side or we didn't see this error after us upgrading clusters everywhere. So thanks Basil again. Thanks everyone involved in the analysis here. Question? Okay. Uh, we had two closed as not Oh, I see there is an issue here. Um, work in progress. That's the second time I need to fix the template. OK, we had a closed as not planned issue. Uh, can't install or update plugins because update Jenkins I euro direct to mirror Yandex. That's a duplicate of the Jenkins Russian user. And it has been confirmed fixed. Now, about the work in progress, and let's also check the, uh, the new topics we could have for the upcoming week. Everyone see my screen? Is it readable enough on GitHub? OK, cool. Perfect. So as a reminder, um, we will have an upgrades. We have to finish the Kubernetes 1.28 upgrade because it, will, it won't be supported by Azure uh, end of month. We have one cluster left, and the operation is planned for Thursday. We will be the 4th of July, independent day in the US, so let's, less users, unless the one trying to use Jenkins during the family uh, lunch or diner, <laughs> but not, not our problem. So 
Jay, Stefan, and hi, we will uh, work on these updates. That should be smooth, just uh, slow because uh, way more services to migrate. But we didn't have any bad surprise until now, so we only have to roll. Uh, we will think about this tomorrow in order to prepare the operation uh, Thursday. We will need to announce it, but yeah, everything else so it should be good. So we keep this one on the upcoming milestone. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, migrate update Jenkins IO to another cloud. Uh, we have a task to run on this one. Uh, while trying to replay, I wanted to just see if it's up to date. Realize that we we need, uh, we absolutely need, so let me, we need to uh, rotate some credential. Uh, so in fact, by rotating, I mean updating on trusted CI Jenkins IO, uh, we need to update rotated credentials that that let, let me rephrase. Credentials in trusted.ci.jenkins.io with the zip secrets method. So we part of the current state of that task is that we are waiting on a pull request to change the way we configure settings and credential for the destination of update Jenkins IO, all the mirrors we will use. Uh, we have a method, automated method, reproducible uh, using Terraform that will generate the zip. The only manual part is to upload the zip on trusted CI. Uh, so that's the step. We need to do this. And if everything goes good, we will uh, go on migrating that pull request and continue. If it goes well, We'll merge the pair by ourselves. Jenkins infra due to Jensec being busy. Any question on this one? I I I thought that the zip file was uploaded and we tried it already. So that's yes. because we did rotate some some exactly. Okay. So we need to 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 plan for uh, the CLI to alert us when we need to rotate that zip file. Yes. Good. But in order to automate it, since we will change the methods, we need to first merge the pull request on the update yeah. center and then add the automation, but absolutely. Oh, the, uh, I, I planned to do it last week and I, I discovered that, oh no, it's not the same method. so. I cannot automate the old one. That would be a waste of time. Yeah, that's egg and chicken first to... Mm. No, it's seed and plant. We plant the seed. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Stefan, you shared the logs. Uh... No, I received the mail from Adrian, uh, I think an hour ago or two hours ago while okay. during my break time. He was not able to um, an, uh, an encrypt my logs. So I need to use another uh, GPG key. So I need to I need to check his mail. I received it before that mailing. So, but I I think he's still on video. Yes. Uh, so proposal as Adrian is on PTO, and we have users reporting no um core updates since the past. Two months, we need to investigate without Adria. We'll have to spend time, and I believe I'm raising the priority of this one unless someone challenged this because two months without the plugin ill score uh, means we all failed uh, because we don't have a reporting or monitoring with the last generation date, for instance. We don't detect errors. So I see that as first we need to fix and then we need to improve. Can we pair on that? Absolutely. Cool. A way to monitor the last updated time to be alerted earlier. Looks good. So I propose this to ones. Let, let me keep it here. So these are going to the next milestone. Uh, next one, we will have credential to update. 
let's start working on it. Stefan, you did it in full autonomy last time. Uh, so the first of us uh, ready to roll. We have automation. Careful because tomorrow trusted will be used. Tomorrow? No. It's not next tomorrow week. The LTS? Oh, next no, week. next Sorry. week. I have a week early. All right. So fourth one to continue working on it. I thought I would have time, but yesterday incidents and CV uh, prevented me to work on it. You don't have to do everything. Yes, but uh, initially I plan to do it since you were working on Q both Kubernetes and the storage. Um, I propose this one to be done this Friday. Is that okay for you, Stefan? Or even before if I can, yes. Because we have Kubernetes 1.28 uh, Thursday. Thursday. So, yep, yeah, we'll see. Um, GSOC. So, as we said, uh, the last blocking point reported by Chris and Derve has been fixed for the students. So, uh, last blocker fixed. Uh, putting on hold until Hervé is back with time allocated to this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move this one off to uh, for uh, not this milestone but the two milestones because Hervé is not expected to spend some time due to both personal and professional uh, constraints. So let's put that on hold and avoid having. Uh, no work on issue on the milestone. Um, Stefan, about the storage migration, could you report? Yes, with the pleasure. stages. Um, I feel I managed to to deal with the the migration for uh, Jenkins Weekly, and it went uh, smoothly. So now Jenkins Weekly Weekly is using um, standard ZRS. Uh, volume that is handled and created and, and managed by uh, Terraform and used by the Kubernetes and, and the short for the Jenkins Weekly. Um, that uh, allowed me to uh, uh, build and create a process that will be used for the same migration for uh, uh, release and infra CI. Um, I did prepare the, the, the pull request for the Terraform creation of everything for release. And, uh, and that process will be, I need, I need to put that in a runbook because it will be available if we need to do some migration for, for anything in Kubernetes. We got a temporary pod that can be spawned uh, close to another pod and, and manage migration between volumes can be useful, yes. Thank you, Hervé, by the way, because he is the one who said that. Uh, something we forgot to do yesterday, you no. know, the morning shower talked on the weekly CI, and we need to do it. Uh, clean up. No, no, that's not that we didn't forget. I, I, I plan to let like at least 24 hours. I think it's even written okay. in the in the issue. OK. so. My bad. I wasn't aware of that. Still, no, but that's fine. Next I, I so still need to clean up, to... but okay. I didn't want to do that too early. Errors. Waiting. Doing it. Okay, cool. So again, the goal here is to saving goals. cash. Saving cash and using the right resource for the for the right service. Any question? Okay, one last step, Jay. Um, so Jay, you are working on the Jenkins agent uh, learning in order to help us uh, finish the task GDK21 agent. So as a reminder, goal, provide GDK21 on all of our build systems. Missing trusted.ci and third.ci for VMs, both Linux and Windows. Jay working on preparing this task. 
So you are at the knowledge uh, knowledge part. Then we will pair on this one, but I fully expect you to be able to finish this one because it involves Puppet, Jenkins Agent, and Jenkins configuration as code. So you should be able to do uh, almost all the work here. I will just push buttons <laughs> and or Stefan or that that's the plan. I love that. Uh, of course, the priority for you, Jay, is Kubernetes 1.28 for, uh, for this one and your learning curve. I propose we will, uh, we will go on this one based on how much do you fare. So we'll discuss this tomorrow on Friday. Is that okay for you? But that's a task you are working on, you are contributing. So yeah. cool. Okay. Uh, any question on the tasks that are that are in progress and we need to move these task, tasks to the next milestone? And we need to check if there is new ones. Exactly. Uh, let's have a look at the triage. Ask OSS is planet for Jenkins Mirror. So we'll need So that's our uh, contributor who provide the new mirror in India. Sailister is his nickname. And they say we have OSS Planet. I don't know what it is. That's OK, we're open. That uh, looks like uh, someone committed to provide mirrors. So worth asking them. I'm not sure what TW stands for. Taiwan. Oh, good. I mean, worth contacting them and adding the mirror. We have an how to apply. So if no, if no one objects, I will contact them as uh, as per my Jenkins uh, infrastructure officer role. Is that okay for everyone? Perfect. Okay, so let's add it to the milestone. And let's remove the triage. Um, do you do we have other new issues? We don't. The other are um, the GDK twenty one that we will update step by step. Good for everyone. Yes, you did, you I, did it fast. It's it's only ten to three. Hey, I prepared. <laughs> uh, there is one issue I would like to bring back. Uh, that will be that will be migration leftover. Um. On That's case. where my, my new pod template will be very useful. Your new, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we, right now, the public uh, cluster that we are going to upgrade to 1.28 this Thursday, that cluster has uh, on one or two nodes only for the system pool on Intel then free nodes for Intel services with, this, with the things here, mainly artifact caching proxy, key cloak, LDAP, mirror bit uh, for update Jenkins IO and get Jenkins IO. I will update the list. Falco and Datadog have been migrated to IRAM64, but I need to confirm it before checking boxes. And then we have free as a node for the rest of the services, which is the, the most heaviest part. In order to decrease the CDF cost and have something easier to manage, we know we can move artifact caching proxy as soon as possible to RM64 and eventually decrease the size of the machines or the not pool. We have to ensure that Datadog and Falco cluster level components are migrated to RM64. And then we will be left over with the four following services. Next in line is LDAP. We already tried moving it to RM64 in the past, and we failed because the data storage is not ZRS. So the work that Stefan has done allows us to prepare migration of LDAP data to ZRS. That will be an operation with uh, outage, of course. The system will be done for a few minutes. But the operation, if works very well with release CI, I will start preparing and planning for LDAP. This is an unrelated cluster. So Stefan and I should not have to collide on this one, but I will plan to work on it with uh, one of you, just to be sure I'm not an alone on this one. So that's why if no one object, I'm moving this issue back to the milestone. 
because at yep. least uh, okay. we can do artifact caching proxy really fast and easily. And we we can still use that that pod uh, um, mirror for searching. Sorry for ACP to uh, populate the fifty gig and not taking out bandwidth. That's a good point. I was wondering if the data data disk was really needed for them. Got to see the the cost if it's just a a few bucks per month. We don't care. But yeah, these are hundred gigabytes data storage, so better to check. Or maybe we can. I don't know if we, if it will be better to 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 go for the premium version because I think they are already premium. Oh, so we yeah. went uh, so we big just need to ZRS. Yep, ZRS and eventually standard if it's if it's not needed. We need to check the usage. But yeah, that's part of the migration. Good, but good points. Okay. That's all we have for today. Do you but have other topics the, you want to? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, and that that include the fact that we need to change the size of the of the nodes of those node pool, because mm -hmm. migrating everything to ARM mean that, or, or most of the thing to ARM mean that in the meantime we can have a look on the on the usage, and maybe change those kind of mm -hmm. machine that we use for both ARM if we can save cash, to get bigger ones. Or I'm the absolutely you can say absolutely okay, good. So the same and, same issue. Yep, an right. artifact caching proxy can be migrated. We can afford losing data. We use PVC yeah. because it was easier for us to for the initial setup. But we could use an empty deer and accept we lose the data every time the con the pods are restarted on a new node. And we can also accept losing data. It's just a bit more bandwidth to repo Jenkins CI, but I mean, that's still okay. Yeah, that's like half of the percent we were using. Yes, exactly. As you wish, yeah, got it. So we will have to work on this and based on metrics. So we will make decision based on that. Thanks, uh, Stefan. Good point. Anything else? We, we have to stay five minutes more. <laughs> <laughs> 55 minutes for two we two meeting in one. I mean, look at so I'm going to stop screen sharing. So I'm going to start by stopping recording. So for people watching us on YouTube, see you next week.